Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the investing masterclass uh, today. My name is Yogesh, and uh, uh, thank you so much for the overwhelming registration. I see a lot of people are joining right now, and uh, uh, the next uh, three to four days are going to be uh, very, very interesting. Uh, we are going to bring um, uh, a lot of experience, a lot of strategies, and a lot of information, uh, first of all, to you. Um, I see a lot of people are, again, uh, they continue to join as we speak. So I think uh, we are going to have a lot of users uh, uh, starting today. And uh, that is the reason I think there are people who are joining um, uh, across uh, different parts of the world. I have a lot of people I see from India, from UAE, uh, uh, from, uh, I think, few of them from UK as well. So welcome to all of you. Uh, investing masterclass is something which we uh, do every uh, three to six months. And the idea for doing these sessions is to spread more and more awareness about uh, the financial markets, about the ongoing trends, and uh, just to uh, see that how we can construct our portfolio. Now, uh, you can use your chat options here. Uh, to ask me any questions which you, which you have regarding your investments. And uh, if I'm able to answer, I'll definitely be answering in the live session or post that. If I'm not able to answer, definitely somebody from my team will reach you out. That being said, for those people who are in uh, UAE, you can definitely, uh, after the session ends, even if you need more clarity on uh, today's session or overall how markets work, Please do not shy away. Do not hesitate to reach me one on one. We are, are we are located in Emar Square and Building Four in Dubai, and uh, we are definitely here to sit one on one as well and explain you exactly how markets work. And this is something which we are going to do uh, for all our participants. Those who cannot come to the office may arrange Zoom sessions or or sessions online. Just talk to the relationship managers who have reached you out and connected you to this webinar, and we'll definitely be able to assist you on this. So once again, my name is Yogesh, and uh, today's session is going to be about uh, uh, understanding how markets work, how online trading work, what are the strategies which we can use, what are the asset classes which are available, and why do we invest? Uh, we have kept this session uh, uh, for one hour. Obviously, I wouldn't want uh, your time to exceed on this, but in case if there's a 10, 15 minutes extension, uh, if, if you wish, you can stay. Otherwise, the recording of this session will definitely be put on YouTube later on. And uh, this session has been divided into uh, four days, 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st. You will Today, we'll, we are going to learn about the uh, basics of how to use a platform. I will also show you a live trading platform and tell you how to use it. And I'll also share some strategies with you, uh, something which has been there in the market for long, but uh, it's, it's not something very conventional, not something which everybody does. And I think that is the reason that why this session is being conducted to uh, bring in your attention that what are different, different products and different ways you can invest in, right? Of course, not all the strategies can be covered in one session, but that, as I said, that you will get a lot of information in this. And I would always suggest, please um, have a notepad or a diary with you so that anything which we are discussing, you can write it down. And later on, if you need to ask any questions, you can. Second day, uh, tomorrow, uh, Ms. Deepa, who's the, head, uh, who's the deputy research head, we, she will be uh, taking care of the session. She will be talking about how to preserve your wealth and, and the other steps towards wealth generation. After that, there will be Mr. Vivian, who will be taking care of the technical analysis, the charts and the technical studies. And by the end of this uh, week, we'll try to have a session together where uh, whatever strategies and uh, fundamentals and technicals we have learned, we'll put it to use to learn live trading. You can reach out to the concerned people who have uh, connected with you and ask for demo trading accounts. So to, after today's session, you can definitely have a demo account for yourself and you can start doing buying and selling and start seeing uh, the prices of commodities and currencies and whatever we discussed today. This is mandatory. Please ask for demo accounts. Otherwise, if you don't practice what we learn here, you will absolutely forget about it. So let's try to make these sessions worthwhile. Please ask me questions later on, whatever uh, if you have understood or whatever you don't understand. If you have any further questions about anything, and I'll try to answer all of them before we end this session. So without any further delay, once again, uh, welcome. And uh, whatever strategies we are going to discuss over here, um, this session is for 
information purposes. Yes, we are going to discuss some strategies. We are going to discuss some portfolios. We are going to talk about some companies, some good stocks. Um, that being said, keep it for information only. In case if you have your live investments accounts and you want to trade or uh, use any of the content I'm talking about, before doing that, talk to your risk experts. Uh, knowing a strategy and executing it right are two very different things. And, and I would suggest that once you get this information, before executing anything on your live portfolios, please connect with your risk experts. The platform I'm going to show you today contains leverage, which is, a, again, a very uh, uh, risky approach towards investment. So please understand that uh, whatever we are discussing about today is only for information purpose. It's not a trading recommendation. It's not an investment recommendation. This is to keep you aware about what's happening in the market and what are the trends involved. Um, please continue to use your chat options as, as much as you can. If you see my presentation, if you can hear me clearly, please write a yes or a OK. And uh, I will proceed with it. And I'll proceed with the rest of the session as well. And uh, if you have, again, any questions, please let me know. So first, we are going to discuss about uh, the very understanding what is in this particular session today on 18th March as we meet. What are the things which we are going to talk about? We are going to talk about the asset classes. A lot of people, they talk about stock markets. They always hear the word stock market and, and, and something comes into their mind. Some people talk about forex trading. Some people talk about forex trading seminars. Uh, the investment as a circle, it is a lot more than just investment in stocks or, or trading in Forex. It is much more than that uh, because there is a certain stereotype set for, for these kind of investments. Sometimes people feel that stock market, uh, a, a lot of people, they lose in Forex trading or they lose in stock markets. However, the world statistics does say that in case of retail clients, 80 to 90% may lose in day trading. But the point is there are a lot of uh, uh, abnormalities which people don't speak about. They don't speak about greed. They don't speak about fear. They don't speak about panic. They don't speak about a lack of diversification. And I think that is one of the reasons that why a lot of people continue to lose in day trading because there is an absence of risk management. A lot of people have very high hopes. So when they take a trade, they really hope that it does well rather than doing proper research. And I think that's really important. And what we're going to learn throughout um, these four days. So I think if you if you like today, definitely continue to um, uh, join these sessions as well. So first, we're going to talk about asset classes, how many products are there which you can invest into. We're going to talk about online trading, how the process is. I'm going to show you the live platform that how the trading happens. How do you take leverage? Most important thing, how short selling works, where you can take advantage of the falling markets as well. We're going to talk about investment in change, something which was the highlight of today's topic, that how you can invest into emerging sectors like artificial intelligence. I'm talking about robotics. I'm talking about um, uh, electric vehicles. I'm talking about cloud computing. I'm talking about remote medical consultation, future mobility, and a lot of these things. Uh, later on, uh, before we end the session, we are going to talk about index trading strategies as well, something which is clearly known as uh, uh, one of the most important strategies, BTST, buy today, sell tomorrow. There are a lot of day traders I see. A lot of day traders also have joined today. And um, uh, it's going to be a really wonderful session, I'm sure, because we are going to discuss two or three different kinds of trading strategies. And not just in index, even in bonds. I've brought you something which is something very, very opportunistic and yet uh, something very conventional. And I'm talking about a German bond, but how to take exposure in that is what going, we are going to learn about. Hands-on experience on the live trading account. Definitely, I'm going to share a live trading account with you where I'll show you that how you can actually buy and sell it, something which is really a piece of cake. Once you understand all of this, you will get an access to a demo account. All you have to do is just ask your relationship managers and they will definitely give you a demo account and you can install that and use it as we progress through these sessions. Now, what is not in this session? Uh, any sort of guaranteed ways to make money? any tricks or insider tips, any magic on the technical charts, any ways to become rich. This session is not about all that. And I, I believe that there are no sessions like this which can teach you any guaranteed ways to make money. There is no guarantee of anything. Everything I'm going to talk about is going to be for a lot of information. But when it comes to life trading and understanding, you have to understand your risk appetite. No strategy is risk-free. Everything has a certain amount of risk. 
there is no trick there is no magic to make money here it requires practice it requires requires hard work and it requires risk tolerance when you enter into a portfolio or whether you enter into day trading you have to mentally prepare yourself that some of my trades are going to be positive some of my trades are going to be negative and i have to deal with it and i have to manage my risk well so let's start with this why we are investing at all uh, there are a lot of reasons behind uh, investment some people want their money to grow some people want to leave a legacy for, for 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 their sons for their daughters for their spouse some people want to achieve independence they want to be financially free some people want to retire early some people have a certain cause which they want to support and all of this for all of this money is needed even if you love something even if you want to support a cause you need financial backup for it you need money for that and that is the reason that why a lot of people invest into different areas and of course i'm sure you will have your good reasons to invest into and that is why uh, we start with understanding the parameters of how you invest and at what rate you invest so what happens is you have a certain amount of money and this is something which i have seen very common especially in students they earn a little amount and they straight away trade into cryptocurrencies they start talking about bitcoins without even knowing what to do with that money the investment risk pyramid actually tells you that how you should allocate your money into different asset classes one word which we are going to talk about a lot it's going to be diversification diversification is something which allows you to spread your risk into different different areas i'm talking about your investments into five six or seven different things so if one goes down it's not necessary the other also goes down and the investment risk pyramid is built for it so the first thing which you see whatever money you earn whatever savings you have you need to put some money aside as your emergency fund as your savings account money which can easily be liquidated money which can come easily to you money which you can keep separate and that is the foundation of your investment are you looking for a higher return in it not really we are looking for security of funds and that is why the very base of your investment should contain a money which is kept in the form of emergency fund what did covid taught us what did covid taught me the pandemic taught us that you always have to keep some money aside so today and i'm going to talk about uh, here i am in dubai so i'm talk, going to talk about dirhams let's say if my monthly uh, expenditure is 10000 dirhams i must keep 100000 dirhams separate as an emergency fund just in case if i don't have a job for the next 10 months while i'm looking for the job my expenses should be taken care of and you need that kind of money if you haven't start saving on an emergency fund you must because that's what pandemic taught us then you need to keep some money in your bank accounts in your savings account where it is safe and secured once you have that you move on you start investing into fixed income securities which are called bonds which we are going to talk about right away and fixed income securities or bonds is simply that you are giving a loan to us government for example when you are buying us government bonds and they give you a fixed income on the money which you have lent it to them so it's a fixed income but you have given a loan to a government for example it just works how we works uh, how it works in a bank bank gives you a loan charges you an interest exactly you give a loan to a government and they give you an interest that is called investment in bond once you have that you move up and you start investing into blue chip companies procter and gamble microsoft uh, walmart mcdonalds and all these kind of companies blue chip stocks uh, in india you must have seen reliance all these kind of companies you start investing into mutual funds you start investing into real estates and then by the end the tip of this pyramid which is day trading speculative trades and options that's when you do once you have a certain base if you see from the bottom to the top the risk increases the rewards also increases right uh, i see a lot of questions popping up here uh, okay okay somebody just turned out that we are here to invest we have we want to invest money we want not only to become rich but we don't don't also want to waste our time and make small amount of money nobody wants to make small amount of money i think that's that's something which everybody wants everybody wants to make a lot of money but definitely see we are going to talk about a lot of risk management and we are definitely going to talk about different strategies how you can invest in um 
can you please explain on bond etfs working as well yes we'll try to cover as much as we can uh, what would be the minimum amount required to start considering then you need to across a range of assets see at this point of time this is a very asked question that how much minimum money i need to invest in let me tell you this right away all you need is any money which you have in your savings even if you have 100 dollars right now you can create a sip out of it by investing into a, a vanguard s&p 500 etf or you, or or, or investq triple q nasdaq all you need is a consistent flow of investment into a product which you believe in and a lot of investors they save money for their children's college education and they do a lot of sips when markets are going down they do more when markets are going up they are consistent they continue to do it so it's not like that you need a certain amount of money just need a mindset and consistency to do it now let's understand what are these asset classes i have been talking about and i'll show you these asset classes on the live platform also but please continue to ask more and more questions as you have and i'll continue to answer them as much as i can asset classes we talk about stocks commodity forex and bonds and real estate when we talk about asset class it's bunch of instruments clubbed together now these bunch of instruments when they are clubbed together they have similar attributes so if i say commodity commodity means any natural resource as we talk about all different kinds of natural resources clubbed together it becomes a commodity i'm talking about gold silver rice wheat sugar coffee crude oil natural gas all of these are commodities and you will be surprised to know that day traders investors they like to buy sell these commodities on daily basis or sometimes they buy it and hold on to it as well so you as an investor can also get access to these commodities to buy and sell it then there are stocks stocks are these usual businesses so let's start understanding how stocks work stocks are the companies the businesses which exist today if you have a netflix account you have a zoom account you have iphone you have samsung you have you use microsoft powerpoint or microsoft excel or you have a dell laptop or you have a pfizer vaccine you use a johnson and johnson product eats mcdonald kfc drink coca cola use mastercard or visa all of these companies they are listed companies in stock markets which means you can invest in these companies by the way of stock trading or stock investments how it works every company whatever capital they require they go to people and they ask for little money from everyone and they allow them to be the small part owners of this company for example amazon stock price at the moment is 170 dollar per share which means if you want to buy one small share of amazon you must pay 170 dollars and you can be that small part owner of the company if the company does well and the share price goes up from 170 to 180 you make 10 dollars on one share if you buy 10 shares of amazon 170 into 10 1700 dollars and we'll also see uh, over here that how we can buy and sell these shares on the live platforms and how many kinds of stock markets are there uh, i'm getting a lot of questions guys i'll move on with the content and by the end of the session i'll definitely answer all your questions i'll just scroll down and see and i'll definitely answer all your questions moving on to the next asset class which is commodities i'm talking about crude oil natural gas soybean gold silver platinum or in juice most traded commodity as we speak gold at the moment the prices have skyrocketed crude oil the prices have gone up it's almost up by 4% there there are commodities like natural gas there are agricultural commodities like rice wheat and sugar which are traded a lot on the basis of seasonality and of course we are going to go through a lot of different different strategies to see that how we can uh, try to trade into these asset classes you are going to have a very separate technical session over this week uh, which will uh, allow you to understand that how to use charts and candlesticks to identify smaller smaller trends on the upside and on the downside and how you can execute these trades followed by something which is a well known asset class which is called forex forex as we talk about forex we talk about foreign currencies we are talking about the major pairs which is euro dollar which is gbp usd dollar yen and these currencies are traded a lot the highest volume generated 6 and a half trillion dollars almost 30% increase since 2016 and more and more and it continues to increase when it comes to forex trading volumes share baskets or etfs or funds as we call it a lot of you must be aware about the concept of mutual funds 
It's basically a basket of products clubbed together. The concept of a share market index, a stock index is also very, very similar. This is where I take you to the live platform and show you how you can see these asset classes and at the same time, how you can buy and sell. We're also going to talk about bonds. Bonds, as I said, bonds are fixed income instruments and it works exactly like a loan. When you go to a bank and take a loan, bank charges you a certain amount of interest and you have to repay that money by the end of a stipulated time period. Correct. Similarly, <coughs> sorry, bonds are similar sorts of investments. Instead of you being the lender, or sorry, instead of you being the borrower, you get to become the lender. You can lend money to the issuer of these bonds and they will pay you an interest, which is called coupon. And you will get your principal amount back as the bond matures, which is called maturity date of the bond. Bonds can be as low as three months maturity, one year maturity, two years, five years, 10 years, even 30 years maturity also. When you purchase a bond, it's not mandatory that you must hold till 30 years. There's no lock-in period. You can buy a bond and you can sell it in the market as well. It depends whether you want to make money on the market price or you want a steady fixed income over the period of the maturity of the bond. That remains with you. The coupon which you're receiving in bond, the total return which you earn on the bond is called bond yield. As I said, guys, there are a lot of things which I'm explaining to you right now. I'm, I'm going to show it to you on the live platform, uh, given the time period which we have. But after this, anybody who's interested to have a one-on-one -on -one live session as well, please talk to your relationship managers and I'll definitely be there online or one-on-one -on -one to connect with you and meet you and show you how uh, we do this. Now, one more asset class which remains here, which we must talk about is cryptocurrencies. Normally, I would not put cryptocurrencies in asset class, but then as we know that Bitcoin, Ethereum, all these prices have been skyrocketing in last uh, few months. Bitcoin is up almost, it has touched 73,000. Today, it is around 66. Ethereum has touched around 4,000, $4,100. Today, it is around 36 or 3,500. Cryptocurrencies have skyrocketed on the news of uh, the possibility of a Bitcoin ETF coming in. And uh, cryptocurrencies are one of the most dangerous, most volatile asset classes. Uh, please understand this. Uh, the risk and reward in cryptos is pretty high. So unless you don't really understand the volatility or un unless you really do understand the volatility, please only then enter into cryptocurrencies. There are a lot of other asset classes which have lesser risk and they are much more predictable than cryptos are. When I say much more predictable, that means as compared to cryptos, not completely predict pred predictable, but we can correlate to like, for example, if central bank cut down the rates, we expect gold prices to go up. We expect stock markets to go up. There is a foundation. In case of cryptocurrencies, that has been lacking. With all due respect for those people who are following cryptos or have cryptos, we know that it's a very speculative and a very volatile and a very dangerous asset. So please uh, study the pattern and only then uh, consider a significant or a smaller amount of uh, your savings into it if you wish to. They are not regularized. They are, there is no regulation. They are not protected under any schemes. So we should remember these few things about cryptocurrencies as well. Now, uh, what basically affects your asset allocation? Which asset class to invest in? If you are younger, around 30, 35, or even 40 year old, and you have another 20, 30 years of working in your uh, life, be more inclined towards riskier assets to earn higher returns. Stock would be one of those riskier assets which you would look for. But if you are closer to your retirement, if you've already retired, you don't have any source of income, better stick with bonds which are giving you fixed income and expects your principal to come back after a certain period of time. Again, time horizon, how much for how long you're investing your money in. If you're putting your money for one month or two months, please don't put into trading. Put into a smaller fixed income bond which can give your money back. If you're putting it for a longer period of time, you can still speculate and, and try it out. Financial goals. What is your goal post-retirement? Or what is your goal with the money which you have put in? Is this for your child's education? Is this for your own personal benefit? Is, is this something which you want to speculate with? So your goals should be very clear. And on those bases, your risk should be identified. Number of dependents, income stability, risk profile. All of these things play a very important role when we are talking about asset allocation. Now comes to the most important thing 
something what we call it as margin trading or leverage based trading and what is short selling this is going to be the foundation of all the strategies we are going to talk about we are going to talk about arbitrage we are going to talk about uh, investments in ai we are going to talk about a lot of things and to invest if you understand margin trading today you will understand how to trade in any kind of platform across the world different trading platforms they follow the same principle same method they have margin trading they have leverage and they provide short selling if you understand these three things 60% of platform you have already understood the rest is just as you progress and as you work on you will try to find it out again guys i see a lot of questions coming in and as i said that by the end of the session i'll be able to answer all your questions so if you have something in mind right now please keep writing keep writing the questions and i'll definitely be able to answer this now what is margin trading something the most simple thing and the most dangerous part of trading is margins because if you overuse it abuse it you might end up losing more than what you have invested you might end up losing all your capital real quick but if you use it efficiently it uh, increases or it utilizes your capital real well margin trading allows you to take place a trade by depositing a smaller amount of money than the required amount so for example if you want to buy 100 shares of amazon amazon the current share price is 170 dollar per share you are buying 100 shares of amazon which means 17000 dollar worth of shares you if you are in a margin trading platform you don't have to give 17000 dollars you just have to give only a percentage of that amount let me show you how this will work see this so we are looking at a current strategy right now uh, and the example which you have taken here let's say there is a stock which is 80 dollar per share just look at this chart real click and look at what we are talking about to purchase 100 shares let's say one share is 80 dollars so if you have to buy 100 shares you will have to give 8000 dollars right now normally how it works you would pay 8000 become the owner of the stock if the stock price goes up you sell it and you get your money back but using margin trading you don't have to give all the amount by yourself your broker participates in this investment so some is your money some is contributed by the broker for which a interest cost is charged if you hold on to this trade for longer than one day see the scenario when you partially invest half yours and half for the broker if the price goes up to 85 you make 500 dollars profit on your investment after you have given the broker's capital back to the broker so you have bought 8000 dollar worth share you have put your money 4000 you have borrowed from your broker 4000 total is 8000 500 dollars profit on 8000 which means it makes it 8500 when you close your trade you give broker's money back and you keep the profit with you so now your total value is 4500 this is a standard form of margin trading this is exactly how it works obviously some of you have asked what about the commissions what about the charges yes in the from this 500 the broker will deduct their commission the broker will deduct their charges but that being said a lot of brokers they have competitive charges and does not affect your profit too much same goes with the loss same goes with the loss think one quick question i can answer can we just buy one share in margin trading or each unit could be a bunch of fixed number of stocks good question when you are doing margin trading you can buy one share but when you are not doing margin trading when you do exchange based trades which means when you put entire money and buy shares with the ownership then you have to buy a significant lot mostly there are still some exchange based platforms which allow fractional trading of the shares but when you do margin trading you can just buy one share in the margin as well so good question this is something which a lot of people ask that do i need to buy a bunch of shares together as derived by the exchange or when i'm doing a margin trading i can buy one you can definitely buy one uh how broker gives money to the trader while depositing margin money how does it work see there is a i mean I'll, i'll sit down with you and explain the whole process but the idea of margin trading is very simple on a online platform when you click on buy a certain percentage from your account is being kept separately as a margin rest is provided by the broker on the books when the prices drop 
and the money which you which you have deposit from your end it reduces to 50% of the loss so for example you have given 1000 dollars and you are holding a trade worth 10000 the moment loss becomes 500 dollars your broker issues a margin call and if you don't add more funds they will close your trade so you are left with 500 your loss is 500 and that is why it becomes easier for every broker to give you uh, uh, contribute from their side once again, the question was how the broker gives bonus money. So it's not bonus money. Uh, let's not call it a bonus amount, but it's more likely a remaining amount. And that remaining amount is added towards the position. But the when the prices drop, you as an investor, the amount which you have put as a margin money, the moment loss reaches to 50% of that amount, you are kicked out of the trade. Your trade is closed. So what broker basically does is allow you to take a higher exposure but at the same time if the price drops to a 50 percent level of your margin they close your trade and that is how you are left with some money and at the same time uh, you have lost a certain amount right so that is something which we do in margin trading and the question why broker agrees to pay half for person who's trading what is the benefit of broker to pay so broker charges you first of all commission volumes are higher third most importantly, when somebody uses the borrowed money and if the trade is rolled over for one night, uh, interest, being, uh, interest is being charged to that particular investor. So the broker earns on the commission, they earn on the spreads, they earn on the holding cost as well. And that is why uh, a lot of brokers would be allowing the investors to take the money. But that being said, broker very carefully checks the risk as well. Once the investor then gives the margin, as I said, once the loss reaches to 50% of the margin, the trade is closed. So a lot of brokers, they make sure that the trader does not end up losing more than what they have invested. That being said, again, most of the time, trades are closed at the 50% of the margin. Sometimes the market opens at a gap and there's a possibility that your account might go negative, but that is a rare possibility. Some brokers give negative balance protection, some not. So the key is, Never take a high leverage in a volatile market. Even when markets are not volatile, please keep your leverage reduced. If you are putting $10,000, buy shares worth $10,000 or twenty. dollars Two times leverage is the most conservative form of leverage. Again, as I said, the chances of loss always hover around any investment. But those people who take higher leverage, they are the ones who are... Uh, at a higher risk and very aggressive investors, right? And what I'm going to do is real quick. I see a lot of questions coming in. One second, one second, one second. Okay, perfect. Let me just do a transaction right away on the platform and I will answer all your questions as we progress through this session, right? Now I'm going to take you to the live platform and I'm going to show you uh, how you can buy or sell something using the margin trading, correct? Just one second. Right. Okay. I'm here on the live platform. Please let me know if all of you can see this. Okay. Just for information, when I say two times leverage, three times leverage, this terminology means that if you have put $10,000 and I'm taking um, and you are taking two times leverage, which means you have put $10,000 but you are buying goods worth 20,000, two times more. When you have put $100,000 and you buy something worth $500,000, you are buying five times more. So you are leveraged five times. This is exactly how uh, leverage terminologies work. Now, I'm going to show you how you do a live trade in a live platform. Now, look at this. Right now, uh, US market is still not open. So I will... Uh, show you a, a commodity let's say gold for example right now gold versus us dollar so as you can see i search my product i see gold prices look at this order ticket everybody look at this order ticket you need order ticket to punch in the order okay and if what you see right now a lot of questions are coming in 
So guys, just keep writing your questions. As I said, by the end of the session, I'm going to answer all your questions. Before that, we'll not end this session. Now, uh, if you see this order ticket, the current price is 2,162. Gold is priced in dollars per ounce. One ounce is around 31 grams. And when you see in the international market, the gold is always priced in dollars per ounce. So today, if you buy one ounce of gold, it is around 2,162 dollars. If you buy 10 ounces of gold, it is worth $21,000. Now, when we are doing margin trading, we must understand that we don't have to deposit full amount, right? Now, here I am writing 100 ounces of gold. 100 ounces of gold is $216,000. The trades which I'm placing are placed in a demo account. This is not a trade recommendation. This is just for your information. So please do not replicate this on your live accounts. This is only for your information. And the account which I'm using is a practice account. It's a demo account. Okay. It does not have real money in it. Now I am buying 100 ounces of gold at a price of 2,163. But what is most important is if you see in this order ticket, and I'm going to zoom in this for you just one so that you can see this. Everybody look at this order ticket right now and see what it shows. So word by word, the buy price is the price at which I'm going to buy this 2,164, 100 ounces of gold. And if you see at the bottom, it says estimated margin, 2,163. That means that the total trade value, which I am buying gold is $216,000. But I just have to deposit 1% from my end, 1% from my end, and I can take exposure in gold worth 200,000. Rest will be funded by the broker, but my margin is 2,160. 1% of my total trade value, which means the moment my loss reaches 50% of my margin, right, somewhere around uh, 1,050 or 1,100, I receive a margin call and my trade is closed if I don't add more funds. So that allows me to take exposure of the money which I have invested in right? Or that allows me to take the profit or, or basically that allows me to take a loss of the amount which I have put in. So if I have put $2,160 from my end, I can take exposure worth 200000 but my loss will be at best 50% of my margin. And after that, my trade is automatically closed. It's the standard practice which most of the brokers do, which most of the CFD brokers do. Right now, when I click on buy right now, see what happens. I'm going to click confirm on this trade and my buy price is around 2,162. I click on confirm, place my order and it's done. One of the beauties of online trading is when you are working on a live platform digitally, these platforms are much more faster and easier to execute the trades. Now, if you see, I have bought gold 100 units right now. And if you see in my positions, this is what I have purchased. And I have just used 1% of the total trade value, which is $2,160 is what I have used. My trade exposure is 216,000 at the moment. So my profit and loss depends on that $216,000. So what is happening right now? I'm leveraged at this moment. I might have put $100,000 and taken a trade worth 216 because I just have to deposit a smaller amount, right? Uh, again, guys, a lot of questions coming in. Once I end this particular section before moving to the strategies, I'll answer all these questions right here. So what I have just done right now, guys, I've currently at the moment, all I've done is went bought gold 100 ounces at 2,162. We're going to leave this alone and go back to the slides and come back to see after a few moments, whatever happens to this. And then I'll show you how the buying and selling uh, or how the risk and the reward in this particular thing works. So getting back to the slide this is what margin trading is next is short selling one of the most important part in the investments these days is to understand how short selling works short selling allows you to take advantage of the falling markets or lately obviously what what we have seen a lot of times markets in 2023 have gone up like of lately we have seen stock markets going higher we have seen cryptocurrencies going higher we have seen stocks like nvidia going higher how, what is short selling? Short selling means in 2022, when markets are going down, would you be able to take advantage of the falling markets? 
you through short selling you can short selling means that when you anticipate or when you plan that the price of something is going to fall down you borrow that instrument from your broker's inventory borrow it and sell it in the live market and once the price drops buy it back at a cheaper price and give that instrument back to the broker while you keep the price difference this is something which is one of the most common forms right now that is the reason why a lot of people use online trading platforms and this is something which if if you don't know about it i'm going to explain it to you real quick how short selling works and i'm going to tell you a few strategies around short selling as well uh like btst i'm going to show you some pair trading strategies as well and again before we move on we'll also discuss about the investments in ai investment in robotics which is also on the agenda right so before i move on to the short selling example on the live platform let me just answer the few questions which have been asked right here uh can we do okay are we nris allowed to do intraday trading yes we are definitely allowed to do intraday trading in, in, in fact there are a lot of uh, uh, brokers which are in uae uh, there are a lot of platform providers which are in uae which allow you to open a trading account and uh, as an nri you can definitely buy and sell uh, instruments and uh, definitely there is there is no uh, problem in why you should not be doing intraday trading you can do intraday trading if it's a uae based platform obviously there is a tax advantage as well so uh, and i'm assuming that your resident status is here so you can definitely do that uh can we just buy one share margin yes you can um what will happen if price will drop account will be in totally loss is it possible that loss will be more than the account amount in the beginning yes as i said that normally when you use a margin to buy a position so if i have bought gold right now worth $200000 but i have used just 1% so if my loss reaches to 1050 ideally the broker should kick me out of this trade but if it doesn't and the markets go up i can make a lot of money in it but talking about the loss more over here the moment my loss reaches to my margin amount ideally my trade should be closed and i should not be losing more than what i have invested but that being said sometimes during a volatile market scenario uh, sometimes accounts do go negative so there is not it's not like a complete no possibility but that happens rarely that's why if you are not over leveraged if you are not on a very high risky trade in a volatile market the chances of that happening is less and there are a lot of brokers which employ good technology good strategies to make sure that the clients do not end up losing more than what they have invested uh what is the holding cost holding cost is the cost which is charged to you if you have bought something today and by the end of the trading day in uae time i am telling you till 1 am at 1 am if you are still holding on to this trade after 1 am you will be charged with a cost called holding cost and that is charged to you by your platform provider because they have financed money with you in this trade so if you hold on to the, this trade overnight there is a cost which is charged to you before 1 am any trades you close there is no holding cost let this be very clear uh hello again too much information to digest in one session i definitely understand so that's why i said let's see there are there are four days we are going to break this down in and i want to make sure that you understand how the platform works even after the session if you want to have a one on one separate session and if you feel that this is something which you want to take more time to understand i'm definitely available so i'm just making because i have almost 300 people right now and some of them are experienced traders some of them are newcomers some of them so i'm just trying to fit everyone in but that that being said i'm definitely available to you one on one if you need me do not worry about it um okay what is two times leverage as i said that if you have 10000 dollars and you take two times worth the trade 20000 dollars so it's two times leverage uh margin trading margin trading should be done in stocks or in forex whether it is forex or stocks or commodities or bonds you can do margin trading everywhere when do us market open so in summers uae time us market opens the stock market opens at 5:30 pm in winters at 6:30 pm so 5:30 pm to 12 am and 6:30 pm to 1 am depending on whether it is summers or winters uh how many grams in 1 ounce of gold a uh, 31.1 uh some say 28 grams yes so the gold which we are talking about here is 1 troy ounce which is 31.1 grams 
normally one ounce is 28 grams but the one which you are looking at right now is 31.1 uh, which is better paper gold physical gold see physical gold you can store it so this is a very common question one of the good questions asked everybody just understand this when somebody says that which gold is better should i buy physical gold and hold on to it it's definitely up to you if you want to speculate on the gold prices if you want to do buy and sell uh, definitely paper gold is better the online platforms are better but if you just just want to buy and hold on to it again when you buy and hold on to it there is a limited quantity which you can right if it's a bigger quantity, where you are going to store it, you can't do it in your house. You might have to pay an extra cost uh, to store it. Could be in a form of a locker facility. So it's up to you how you're willing to do it. At this point of time, gold future contracts are available, which are valid for two to three months. So you can buy a gold future contract, buy and hold on to it. And you don't have to pay any holding cost as well. So I think uh, in either case, paper gold works well. Unless you want to use physical gold to make something out of it in the future or pass it as a legacy to your heirs might go for physical gold but you must understand in terms of security and storage physical gold is something which might give you problems so online platforms are currently at the moment which are providing you that service uh in a demo account which you are providing right now is it a real market price yes it's a real market price money is fake price is real is leverage mandatory to take while doing my trades so the platform which i'm showing it to you right now yes but there are other platforms as well which do not allow you to take any leverage you put the money and the money which you have put, you can only trade with that amount. No margins, no leverage. There are platforms which are available for that as well. Should short selling be squares within the same day? Not necessary that short selling transaction has to be closed at the same day. You can hold on to it as long as you have the margin to hold to it. Uh, when does US market open? Order? If I've invested $5,000, how much units I recommend to buy gold to avoid high risk? With $5,000, I think... Two ounces, three ounces, more than enough. Two or three ounces, more than enough. Gold moves 15 to $20 a day easily up and down. You buy three ounces, you're talking about 50 to $60 movement in your portfolio. But that, as I said, 1% in your of your entire equity. So you have to see returns in percentage terms if you want to keep your risk low. Uh, market timing, US, London. So US, as I said, 530 Six five thirty in the summer, six thirty in the winters. PM UA time uh, for London in summers it's twelve PM. Uh, sorry, it's eleven AM in summers, twelve PM in winters. Uh, Tokyo normally opens around five fifteen AM uh, in 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 winters, four fifteen AM again. So five fifteen AM, four fifteen AM. This is when the Asia opens. UK and Europe opens around eleven AM, twelve PM. US opens five thirty PM, six thirty PM. So this is the thing which is what you can do in UAE. You can, if you get up in the morning, throughout the end of the day, you will have different, different trading sessions you can look at. Uh, in case of margin trading, how much amount be retained in the account to cover the deficit? Uh, you must keep, at, as I said, at 50% loss, your positions are closed. So you must keep at least 50%. Uh, you put more money in the amount. So in case if a margin call comes, you might have to add more money and you can do it. Holding cost is how much percentage depends product to product. Are we providing insurance for the clients as well? So just so you know that in case of the liquidation of the platform provider, our insurance up to $2 million is being provided to the clients. But that is not the insurance against the loss in the market. That is the insurance amount or loss in case if the CFD provider or the platform provider becomes insolvent or go bankrupt. Uh, rollover charge, rollover charge, financing cost, holding cost is the same. Uh, you will tell about trade entry and exit. Yes, over the period of sessions, we are going to also going to talk about how you can enter and exit in technical analysis, definitely. Uh, okay, okay. What is the best margin in the safe mode? As I said, two times leverage enough, not more than that. Perfect. I see there are a few more questions. Once I show you the short selling and explain you the portfolios, uh, I'll be more than... Uh, ready to answer these questions. So just keep writing more and more questions you get. Now, short selling, as I said, one of the most easiest, one of the most uh, interesting ideas so far, and this is not something which is very new. Short selling allows you to take trade when you're expecting that the markets will fall. And you can do it in your live platform. Going back to the live platform right here, let's say I'm talk about crude oil today. Crude oil prices have shot up. 
But let's take uh, a US stock market index called S&P 500, right? Now, currently, so just for some people, US 500 or S&P 500 is a basket of 500 stocks clubbed together, all right? 500 stocks clubbed together in one index. So the S&P 500 shows the average increase or decrease. And this average is based on the movement of all those 500 companies together. So if you are buying one unit of S&P 500, you are basically taking exposure in these 500 companies. And if you want to see which are these 500 companies, all you can do is Google S&P 500 components and it will show you the 500 companies which are in this basket. Now, let's say, for example, today we are expecting that S&P 500 index or US stock market is going to be coming down. Okay. Now, if the US stock market is expected to go down, what I can do is borrow some units of S&P 500, right? One unit is $5,000. So let's say I borrow some units, borrow, not buy, borrow from my broker and sell it live in the market. How I'm going to do this? Just see this out. Select sell, right? Put, let's say, 10 units right now. 10 units of S&P 500 is equal to $51,000. And now I'm not buy anymore. I have selected sell, short sell. So when I click on sell and short selling, the word short selling is basically to differentiate a regular selling transaction. Short selling means that this transaction which you are starting, you're starting with a sell. The main question is how can I sell something which I don't own? Well, you are borrowing it from your broker. You are borrowing it from your broker and you are selling it in the market. When you sell it, just like I did, for example, click on sell. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see this real clear. See, sell, confirm, place my order and it's done. So I have sold 500 S&P 500 units, 10 units in the market. How did I sell? I borrowed it from the broker, clicked on sell, used my margin and sold it exactly in the same manner how I buy, I sell it. Now what will happen if the price drops? So imagine an entry of $51,000 in your book, right? Because when you borrow 10 units at a price of $5,000, current market price right now, and when you sell it in the market, 10 units, $5,000, $50,000 worth S&P sold in the market, now, when the price drops, you use that money, which you have gained after selling out of that money, use the money to buy it back at a cheaper price, right? So let's say you sold it. So the example which we have taken in the platform is S&P 500. The, the example which you can see in the slide that let's say the stock of Microsoft, 10 shares of Microsoft worth $300, for example. You borrow these shares from your broker's inventory, sell it in the market, $300. Let's say the stock drops to 200. So out of 300, which you have received, you can use 200 and buy the shares back. $100 remains with you. Microsoft shares go back to the broker. And if you see this, you have gained money from the decline of the stock prices. You anticipated a fall in the market. You borrowed the instrument from the broker, sold it in the market. So you get some money, hypothetically, right? Not that the money is being credited to your account. But in an entry, you see that there is a plus of some funds. Prices drop. You use some money to buy it back. And the price difference remains with you. So if you borrowed Microsoft shares at a price of $300, sold it in the market, get $300. Price drops to 200, buy it back for 200. So use that 300, which you got, take 200 out of it and buy it back. You are left with hundred dollars. That's your profit. And Microsoft shares go back to the broker. This is called short selling, right? So this is something again, uh, as I said, you're not, when you are selling something, you are not buying anything from the broker. You are borrowing it from the broker and then selling it in the live market. Right. It is as good as let's say if there is a product which you feel the prices are going to come down, you go to your friend, borrow that product, sell it in the market, 
get that money wait till the price drops then use that money to buy the product at a cheaper price keep the difference with you price difference with you and the the commodity the phone which you got back you give it back to your friend this is exactly how short selling works and in this online platforms you can do short selling you can buy so now what we have understood is the two ways you can make money one by the upside prices second is by the downside prices for more information on short selling you can again have a one on one session later on guys if you like to uh, even if you search short selling anywhere it is very easily explained in different forms obviously i'll send you this pdf as well and you can definitely go back and revisit this but I'll, this is something which you must know in short selling we are taking advantage of the falling prices now coming back to the the agenda investing in change investing in change means what was today's topic uh, the ones which we are talking about disruptive technology or investment in ai and robotics uh, there are different areas of disruption as we all know uh, this is just one statistics which i which i collected and just see this out why uh, investment in disruption is really important i see guys again a lot of questions are coming in i'll definitely answer it just wait till the end of the session and before we wrap up the session we are going to answer all the questions now uh, if we see that there is uh, before 2008 uh, and before the recession happened uh, the top 10 companies by their market size were mostly the consumer utilities exxon mobil which is a oil company uh, then there is uh, uh, gas from there is uh, general electric petro china uh, uh, procter and gamble royal dutch shell at&t just one tech stock mostly microsoft which was there on that entire list and these were the companies which were which had the highest market cap and after the financial crisis till 2018 next 10 years we saw complete transformation of the digitalization here what we saw was that the largest market cap companies top 10 by 2018 10 years were around all those tech companies which we know today apple alphabet microsoft amazon again this is 2018 the 10 years statistics after that if you have seen tesla also gained their momentum nvidia now have gained their momentum so if i see the top 10 companies are market cap most of them are tech that is the reason that at this point of time you must understand how important the future investments are how important the investments in ai and robotics and other areas is so when we talk about different areas of investment or investing in in the mega trends we talk about artificial intelligence which involves cloud computing which involves uh, live streaming which in, in, involves mobile connected or internet of things we also talk about uh, investments in dna sequencing genomic revolution or genomic sciences companies which are working on uh, uh, gene therapy for example in robotics i'm talking about drone manufacturing 3d printing then there are clean power companies then there are companies related to blockchain all of these areas together involve uh, the investments in the mega trends or investment in the futuristic companies and well so there is a portfolio which we have uh, developed and you can just look at these companies and, and 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 keep a check on it as i said that this is for your information and the reasons which you can see uh, that before we move on to the index trading strategies you can see that how we can uh, look at those companies and how we can take advantage of the emerging uh, tech areas which are into second right here slides and yeah i'm going to share this portfolio with you just have a look at it guys note it down if you can um, again this is few stocks which we have pointed it out and uh, if you see in 2023 a lot of these stocks have performed well 2024 as we transition the us tech sector uh, it is showing a lot of strength at the moment as well uh, there are a lot of tech firms which are expected to go uh, even better cloud computing revenues have increased they are expected to go even higher so look at the stock snapshot as we talk about these uh, Uh, these companies 
right here. I hope everybody can see this. Can everyone see this? I think I'm getting some issue in the network, but I think network seems to be stable. So perfect. Now I feel that like everybody can see this. Look at these companies. And I'm going to give you a very small, uh, very quick, uh, brief description of all of them. Uh, we talk about NVIDIA, for example, Microsoft, Facebook, Salesforce, CrowdStrike, Palantir, MongoDB, and Datadog. So this portfolio can be, again, if you need, please talk to your RMs and you can get a copy of this. Uh, the, the prices have been updated as of uh, 15. And look at, look at the idea. For example, uh, NVIDIA. And uh, guys, if you, if you, again, you can take a copy, you can take a picture also on this or just write out the points. NVIDIA has been one of the best performing stocks so far. In, in 2023 alone, we saw a 250% increase uh, in the stock. Uh, as of now, 2024, the stock has continued to go up. They have all these stocks. And if I tell you in the latest uh, Q4, which was 2023, NVIDIA's next earnings has still not come. But the last Q4, NVIDIA surpassed all the earnings expectation. Better than projected earnings. Very strong demand for the enterprise software, for consumer internet applications. Autonomous driving, financial services, healthcare, data centers, sales. This has all increased NVIDIA's revenue and it has gone up by 400%. Looking ahead, again, it is expected that the NVIDIA will continue to grow throughout 24 and 25. There are a lot of investments happening into the cloud services sector, right? We are looking at generative AI, we are looking at expanding consumer base, and they are going to introduce next generation B100 Blackwell chip which is a very AI focused. So their, their focus is very set this year. Revenue prospects are higher. They're into a very dominant position. They are working for working into a lot of manufacturing of the chips, which are expected to train generative AI models. So their products are very high in demand, uh, very among affluent enterprise customers. As you can see in the entire presentation, see, this is a chart what it looks like and it continues to skyrocket some statistics regarding their forward ps forward sales 30 day volumes as well dividend yield of course these are tech stocks they do not give out any dividends but there there's a possibility of a lot of price movement up and down so you can always try to capitalize on the price movement and that's why we need a definitely a mix of the stocks portfolio when I give you a tech stocks portfolio, it doesn't mean that you have to exhaust all your savings into tech stocks. This is supposed to be just a part of your overall investment portfolio. Please understand tech is one of the most riskiest uh, industries at this point of time, obviously, because tech is a roaring industry. We cannot be away from tech. And that's why I put out companies which are in a dominant zone, but don't invest all your money collectively into it. You have to diversify. Remember what we talked about. Uh, okay. There's a lot of people say there's a lot of information overloaded. So see, again, as I said, guys, what I'm sharing it with you is for the session. Uh, once you get all the PDFs with you, please, you can study it and you can get back to me. Uh, at the end of the day, I, I don't want everybody to get bored also out of this session. We'll just take, I think, 15 minutes more before we end up with the strategies and why, uh, I have covered everything in once together. Because at the end of the day, when you're using your platforms, so after this, you, you can ask for your demo accounts and practice. What you don't understand, you can reach me out personally on one-on-one -on -one session and I can definitely tell you to make sure that uh, you, you understand everything right. Perfect. So this is where, uh, right, one second. So as we speak about uh, NVIDIA, another stock, Microsoft, Again, one of the best companies at the moment, market cap exceeding $3 trillion. Second quarter of fiscal 2024, they have given impressive financial results, revenue of 18% year over year. And uh, they have a very strong cloud computing platform, which is called Azure, a great competitor to Amazon's web services. They have seen faster growth. Both of them are very close rivals. And again, as I said, uh, 
Microsoft's operating margin, because there has been so much uh, investments in the cloud, investments in the AI, in the gaming ecosystems, Microsoft's operating margin, it has expanded 43%. And this shows that they are financially very prudent. Their financial performance is good. Their balance sheets are strong and they're investing in new areas as well. They have a lot of free cash flow. So you can look into the Microsoft and uh, continue to track it. Then there is Facebook. Again, they have beat up all the earning estimates. Their revenue is really good for the fourth fourth quarter, uh, which under Facebook comes uh, under Meta as a company comes Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. There is Facebook Messenger and they have been growing. Uh, if you see threats, which is just like Twitter at the moment, it has been growing uh, at a certain pace and uh, their monthly active users have continued to grow. And that is something which is really, really important. Uh, there has been a decline in 2022, but then the stock has continued to do better in 2024 as well. There is Salesforce Inc., which is also a American cloud-based software company, guys. So these are a few companies which you should definitely look at. Uh, earning per share, again, better than expected. The growth trajectory has been very good. They have uh, did uh, strategically acquired a company called Slack, then Tableau. And their product portfolio has a broad end. contract values are higher. Again, it's a very competitive landscape for Salesforce as well, but they have continued to maintain a very dominant position over four times larger than their closest rival, which is Microsoft in the cloud segment in the CRM market as well. So again, the stock is promising. Continue to have a look at it. But before you take any trade, please make sure that you have uh, your risk experts with you. This is for your information at the moment. Uh, okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just stop for 10 minutes, answer all the questions. Somebody just said that, please answer questions. So let me, let me just answer all the questions from the top. Uh, one second, right here. Okay, we'll, we'll do this. I answered this, I answered this, I answered this. Uh, margin trading works everywhere. How many ounces of gold, paper gold? Okay. Um, in case of margin trading, how much amount to be detained? Uh, okay, I already said that. Roll over charge. What is algo trading? So algo trading allows you basically, uh, there are a lot of technical studies which you can put in your uh, software, uh, sorry, in your platform. Basically, there are platforms which come up with uh, uh, with hidden algorithms. And what those algorithms do is, let's say there's a technical study called moving average in which uh, the price of a commodity is tracked for 50 days. And if it breaks that price range, a buy call is issued. Using algo trading, if a price goes below that bandwidth, automatically a trade is being placed with a risk and reward. So algorithm trading basically doesn't need you as a client to execute trades. It can do it automatically. When we are buying the shares, we are actually getting the ownership of them. In a margin trading account, there is no ownership. But in an account where you are not using leverage or margin, yes, you get the ownership of the stock. How many grams of gold can you store in your house legally? Wow. Uh, I'm actually not aware of that. I think in your house, you can store as much as you want, as you can, as much as you can protect it. I think when I say uh, storing in your house, I say it with a more of a safety. I mean, how much in your house you can store depend how big your house is. Uh, what is the connection between bond yield and stock market price? See, bond, bonds and stocks are two different asset classes. It happens a lot of times when bonds are much more familiar as an investment, people would take money out of stocks and invest into bonds. But when it comes to the risk understanding, bonds are relatively less riskier than stocks. Uh, if bond deals are better, then stock prices might come down, but only because of people would take money out of stocks and invest more into bonds. So it's just classic one asset switch to another. Does your platform offer negative balance protection? At the moment, no, we don't uh, offer negative balance protection. Uh, however, the, the, the uh, rules are very clear for liquidation if you're margin if your account value reaches 50 percent of the margin uh, the platform automatically uh, closes all your trading positions what is the best margin in safe mode uh, as i said 
if you are taking leverage either no leverage is the best or one or two times leverage on the conservative side is it possible to trade on nsc and bsc not using this account there are very few brokers in ua which provide allow you to do trade in nsc and bsc because volumes are not available here but you can use uh, exchange traded funds which gives you an exposure on indian stocks that can be provided to you on the platform yes can you elaborate between borrow and buy so borrow as i said you borrow from the broker sell it in the market buy means you are actually buying from the market so when you borrow it sell it in the market price drops you can buy it back at a cheaper price is how short selling would work uh it seems if you do not make at least $2000 profit per month it's not worth the time see it depends sometimes there are strategies which doesn't take too much of your time and can be very can yield good returns sometimes yeah i mean if you are doing day trading glued to your screen it should be worth something but we never suggest the clients to be glued to your screen or do day trades day on day that's why we work on the strategies strategies which we will understand throughout this uh, time uh, in short selling platforms in short selling platform separate or it is usual platform a uh, same margin trading platform you can use for short selling as well another question is it ideal and effective only when one buys back after a short sell entry is my understanding right is it ideal and effective only one buys back up? yes so once you do a short selling entry after only then you can buy the instrument back at a cheaper price and that instrument goes back to the broker and the price difference remains with you from where can we get in four annual report about global top 100 uh, companies to fundament make a fundamental analysis see their balance sheets are available on the web because these are publicly listed companies you can always find annual statements or balance sheets of all these uh, uh, instruments you can find out balance sheets of all the companies on the web there are a lot of platforms which also provide you but you can find it online like tesla financial statement you just have to search google and you will find it uh which is better dividend stocks or non dividend stocks both you need dividend stocks to provide you a fixed income in your portfolio you need non dividend tech companies because they move up or down a lot so your risk element needs to be again the composition needs to be tweaked by you how much risk you are willing to take stocks like amazons and teslas they move a lot in your portfolio but they don't give you dividend stocks like coca cola mcdonalds they don't move a lot but they give you a fixed income so there i think it should be a mix of both are you based in dubai or us we are based in dubai uh we are based in dubai but if you are based in us we can definitely do online session and i can help you out in which app can we create demo account century traders in century traders is the app which you can use for trading your uh, uh, creating the demo account or you can talk to your rm and they will our relationship managers which have contacted you and they can provide you one uh could you include some indicators in the technical analysis in coming days definitely technical analysis sessions will have indicators uh for it um okay what is the difference between a 50 day moving average and 50 sma see once you use the technical session i think better to answer this question then uh is there any pledge request to be done through otp for margin trading is there any pledge request to be done through otp for margin trading uh, can you please elaborate the question i didn't understand this in future which share could give return and what will the market in future so see from a future perspective uh as i said the portfolio allocation should be a mix of fixed income stocks dividend stocks which you must have in your portfolio followed by the tech companies uh a other part which we talk about is the futuristic companies which are into electric vehicle like if you see neo for example a lot of you must have seen chinese markets were down in last year there were a lot of tech companies which were down uh, in china so currently the chinese uh, tech sector has again started moving up so you can keep a check on uh, uh, a lot of chinese uh, uh, tech companies there are funds also which provide you that exposure uh, will you explain about forex trading in remaining three classes indicators and candles yes there will be a technical session where mr vivian who will be able to explain to you that how candlesticks work and how entry and exits can work uh, borrowing cost is same as taking delivery of a stock uh, no borrowing cost is something which is the margin trading cost Uh, and you don't get the delivery of the stock if you're doing margin trading. Instead, if you're not doing margin trading, then you can take delivery of the stock or ownership of the stock. When you set the stop loss, how much do you think the percentage loss we need to set up? It it's a very personal risk reward thing. But you see that how much a stock moves or how much instrument moves. Like gold moves twenty dollars or twenty five dollars a day. So if you have taken a trade, you must know that it is capable of going down twenty dollars. So whatever percentage is that depends on your risk reward actually. 
Ideally, a 1% rule should be followed. You should not lose more than 1% in your trading account every day. The most conservative thing. So ideally, you should follow that. By default, a lot of pro platforms, they give a 5% uh, default stop loss. But you can change it always to 1% or 2% depending on your requirement. If the interest rate drops, will bond prices go up? Yes. When mostly the rates are cut, the bond prices do go up. Because the existing bond holders, they are getting a higher coupon while in the market, the rates have been cut down. So the value of those bonds, they start going higher. So that's why when rate cuts, the bond prices go up. When you set up the stop loss function, how much is reasonable? As I said, that depends. Do you use TradingView platform? Uh, not really. We have our own chart, so it is available as well. But if you want, you can use it. What are documents required to open a trading account? Just your casual KYC. Uh, Passport copy uh, followed by address proof, and that is it. Will you be showing how to put a stop loss? Yes, I can. Uh, does Century Broker give access to MT5 or MT4? We are connected to a few platform providers which can provide you MT5. So, yes, from our side, we can provide you MT5 exposure as well. So, that is all of the questions which have been asked so far. As I said, that you can get the copy of this portfolio AI and uh, the ones which we talked about. Uh, in your screen what i will also do is uh, since uh, we have already spent one hour 15 minutes here uh, what we can also do is can we use mt5 or mt4 yes you can get an mt5 exposure also uh, trading in shares could be safe for a long term investment so see if you buy shares for a longer period of time if it, at the end of the day it all depends on uh, the company's financials right like jet airways was a great company it looked like a very long-term stock, but eventually the company died out. I would always suggest that these days, uh, it's not like earlier where you buy a stock and hold it for 10 years to get that return. Uh, these days, the way market works, the volatility works, uh, these kind of returns can be generated in six months or a year. My uh, understanding to you is always see that how much the benchmark is giving. If S&P 500 goes up 11-12% average a year, if you are making money on your stock slightly more than that, you should cash in your investments and get out and wait for another opportunity to get in. That is what I would say. Uh, stocks which are smaller market value, you can buy and hold on to them because sometimes those are the companies which will grow eventually in value. Right. So, guys, what we can do is could you explain the contract expiry dates? Yes. Uh, on a future contract, uh, just real quick. Century, uh, yeah, that's my platform. So a future contract expiry simply works like so. If I if you write, if you write crude oil over here, and look at the expiry contracts over here. So let's say for example this is an April contract, and if you go on product overview, the expiry shows 18th March, which means if you buy this crude oil today. You have up till 18th March, which is today, tonight, till 8.30 p.m. You can keep your trade open. After that, it will automatically get closed. When you are this close to the expiry, I would suggest trade on the next best contract, which will expire, uh, let's say, in April. So if you see crude oil May contract, and if you go on product overview, it shows that it will expire in 18th April, which means if you buy this today, you can hold on to this trade without paying any holding cost till 18th of April. But on 18th of April, it doesn't matter whether you are in profit or loss, automatically your trade will be closed. Uh, question, does each market NASDAQ, UK 100 or Dow has the best time to trade? I noticed there is a certain time where the stock value moves very fast. See, I'm so glad you asked this question because there is a strategy which is related to it and it's, it's called uh, a BTST. And um, this is the strategy which allows you to take advantage of the gap up openings and gap down. But because you asked, U.S. market uh, trading time best is when it opens around uh, 5.30 p.m. NASDAQ and Dow both are at their best around 5.30 because Europe is already open. And now when U.S. traders hit the floor, you see uh, overlap, a session overlap here. So definitely there is more volatility in U.S. indices around evening UAE time. When it comes to U.K. 100 and European, it's definitely afternoon and then evening because Afternoon is when a lot of Europe-based and London-based news also comes. The data also comes. Inflation data, retail sales, uh, industrial data, and all of that. So you must uh, trade European indices around the afternoon and US indices in the evening. You will get a lot of movement. 
can we roll over future contracts and is there any holding cost involved future contracts does not have holding cost by the end of the expiry of the contract trades will be closed automatically and if you want to take another position in another future contract you can do it manually and there is no holding cost on the future contract do we have to hold to buy stock in certain country before big government announces cpi ppi interest rate uh, so normally uh, again a good question see interest rate decisions inflation uh, these kind of data helps central banks decide what to do to the interest rates to increase it or decrease it and on that basis the stock market performs so if you have a long term perspective you want to hold it for one or two years you are looking at because the rate cycle would finish in a one or two years whether increase or decrease that could decide the future of the stock so yes i mean if you buy a stock before that news like for example right now a lot of people have seen us inflation which has gone higher slightly as compared to expected so the rate cut expectation which was from us market has now reduced which means no more rate cuts in the near future so a lot of people would be slightly hesitant to get into stocks because of this but on the other side european markets germany is into recession and there is very less chances of uh, rates being going up so they are a better category for rate cuts at the moment so that could bring german index slightly on the higher side so yeah i mean you can definitely plan that out uh holding cost still not clear so see better what will happen is once you take the platform and start trading so what we'll do is right now i think we have passed a lot as per the time but what we are going to do is guys uh take these demo accounts right request them through the website or talk to your relationship managers and uh, take the demo accounts uh what we are, we are going to do is do buying and short selling trades together reach me out for a one on one session if you wish to uh tomorrow there will be a session which will be uh, conducted by ms deepa who is the the head a deputy head research and uh, she will explain some different concepts after that there will be uh, mr vivian who will talk about technical analysis candlesticks charts and patterns and then by the end of this uh, session i will come again and i will show you some strategies related to index and others and we'll trade those live together so this is not the end of the session it's just the beginning just try to wrap your head around what we have discussed today take the demo accounts reach me out one on one and i'll definitely be able to cater every single one of you separately if i'm not there there are so many people in our teams which will reach you out and they will do personalized one on one sessions for you so reach us out definitely i think limited what we can do in one and a half hours is try to cover everything try to answer all the questions but after this take your demo account uh write it down we'll send you the portfolio which we just discussed today and go through that portfolio come up with more questions and reach us out one on one for those who are not in uae we can arrange zoom sessions personally for them those who are in uae want to have zoom sessions we can do that for them want to come to the office and understand this even after so i'm sure a lot of you have been uh, fasting as well no worries after iftar if you want to visit to the office we are available to you any sessions to be done after iftar after 7 pm till 10 pm i'm definitely 100% available at your disposal just reach us out uh holding cost and margins negotiable holding cost uh, not really margins are also decided by the broker it's not something really to negotiate on holding cost uh, i think it depends on the interest rates so it's really uh, uh, i think there is a broker markup but that is again depending on the trading volumes you know probably it could be uh will you share the ppd definitely i'll share the things which we have discussed today along with the the portfolio as well what we have discussed today and uh, just go through it and as i said please reach us out um how do i get a relationship manager uh i'm sure somebody must have uh, reached you out uh if not just put up a query in uh, using our website and somebody will definitely reach you out right so guys once again uh those who have understood the concept those who have completely not understood as i said reach me out i am 100% available to you even post session so arrange your sessions talk to your relationship managers fix your sessions and i am there this is the month of ramadan is the month of giving any knowledge every knowledge is provided to you right so we'll see you soon definitely be there for tomorrow's session as well it's going to be a very interesting session and be in this master class for throughout four days you are going to understand a lot of things
So once again, thank you so much. I'll see you uh, by the end of the week. But there will be more people who will be catering you for this entire session. So we'll see you tomorrow at the same time with a different topic. And then uh, we'll continue from where we left.